This is a sequence of chemical reactions lab. We're going to start in the fume hood where we're going to react copper metal with nitric acid and change the copper, solid copper to copper plus two in solution. And from there, there's going to be a, a set of reactions that's going to change um, from one copper compound to the next. And each one has a different look to it, a different color. And that's what you're going, one of the things that you're going to be observing throughout the lab. So I'll tell you what's in, each, in the solution uh, as we go, and you'll write down those observations along with the other data that we'll collect. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to weigh the copper sample. Got a weighing boat in there. It's probably be fine on its own, but it might roll off, so do that. And we have 0.614 grams for the copper. Okay, we have our hot plate with our beaker of water, 100 mils of water, and we have a 250 mil beaker we're going to put inside this beaker, so uh, that's so that the beaker inside only gets so hot, only get, the most it's going to get is 100 degrees Celsius. We don't want the, uh, the nitric acid evaporating away. Now. First thing is I took the wire that we had, that we just measured the mass of, and I bent it so that it there's no chance that it's going to uh, get stuck against the walls. We want to make sure that all of the copper is underneath the solution. Okay, get that out of the way. And then we're going to put in eight mils of nitric acid. I think this is nitric acid, I always check just saw that it was that yellow look to it so yep that's the stuff and it's six molar this is fairly high concentration gotta be careful that's why I got my gloves on if you were to get any of this on it's not like in the movies you're not gonna pull away a, a skeletal hand but it's gonna start burning pretty quickly you usually have a few seconds to get to the to wash it off before it gets through the dead skin cells and the oil in your skin then if you don't notice uh, right away, in about a minute or so you'd notice. And this, for six molar like this, you'd notice it in seconds. So we put the nitric acid in here. And if we did nothing, it, it, it would react, but it would take a long, long time. You know, if we just left it at room temperature, it would, it would take a long time to react. Um, hours, maybe days, I don't know, I never tried it. So what we do is we heat it up to kick start the reaction. Ah, there we go. And get it in there so we can see it. And now I'm gonna turn on the heat and uh, might have to turn it up high, we'll see. But what we don't want is the water to boil. If it boils, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it just starts to make this uh, beaker jump around. So we want to try to keep uh, it hot, hot enough to get the nitric acid um, reacting quickly with the copper, but not so hot that the water is uh, making the beaker jump all over the place. Okay, we're three or four minutes in. You can see the copper uh, two ion is forming, the blue color. And you can also see that kind of orange, yellow, brown gas. That's NO2 gas, very dangerous. That's what we're doing in the fume hood. And pretty soon it's going to be so strong I don't want to even have my camera over the top. But right now it gives you a good idea what's going on without the glass in the way, but from here on in, I'm probably gonna just do side shots to protect my camera and my hands. So this is the end of the reaction. That blue color there, that's just the copper two ion. And this solution is now copper two nitrate. And this is the solution you're supposed to make your first observation of. So write down what you see and we'll go on to the next step. So the next step is to add in sodium hydroxide and they give you a volume that you should use and that, that's a good guideline. I'm just gonna take it right from the stock solution and because they say there's also a test that you do for pH so I'm gonna keep adding the sodium hydroxide until this solution is basic, and you should be able to see 
and I'll go, come closer for this in a second, but you should see that the solution is changing into a kind of a jelly. Let's stir this up a little more. See that? Like a, yeah, very much like a jelly. And we'll put in more of this. And then let's do a test to see what the, the uh, pH is here now. All right, here is the copper two hydroxide solid doesn't look very solid there's there's water in here so it's a slurry but this is where you'd make your observation that's the copper two hydroxide and we had to be careful because if you add in too much of the sodium hydroxide you can drive this back into solution you create a complex ion and that's not something you need to know for this class but if you add in too much we can go too far and it in the solid changes back into a solution and here are the two tests that i did the top one is the first test. You can see for red litmus paper, that means it really all it looks like is that you dampened the paper so that is uh, you know, approximately neutral pH. And then after I added in some more uh, sodium hydroxide and touched the, uh, the paper, there you see that it's blue. There's also the blue due to the uh, copper two hydroxide. So this is a little tricky, but if you see that the uh, you can see where the copper two hydroxide solid is, but then you can also see that the liquid leached away and became that purple, and that means that it is a basic pH. So we got what we're after. We're set. That's the next form of copper, and we'll go on to the next uh, reaction. Okay. Oops. All right. Um, so, so the um, we have our copper two hydroxide slurry. That's the solid is in there. And then I'm going to add in about 100 mils of water. And then this is going, we're going to heat this. And this is going to cause the copper 2 hydroxide to change into copper 2 oxide, which is a brown, kind of muddy look to it. But let me turn on the gas here. There, you can already you can see that it's already changing color here. It's getting darker. So I'll let it run for a little bit here, then I'll. But if it's gonna take its time, I'll cut away. But you should start to see those little bits of darker. Yeah, that's those little flecks there are the copper two oxide. So I'll uh, stop here so I can get a, move this shot in a little bit closer. Now this has to be a basic solution, so I, and, oh, there we go. So I added in a little bit more of the sodium hydroxide solution, just make sure that it's, it was plenty basic and I thought it might be just slightly basic when I do, oh, that's neat. So you can see it's slowly reacting. The puffing is just to the bubbling of the, of the or boiling of the water, so I gotta <laughs> should probably pull this away. We don't need it blasting all over the place. And there we go. So to me, looking at it, I can see a slight blueness to it. We want to make sure that we go until everything's reacted, and then it gets really tough to tell when it gets. A, very dark, very dark brown. It's you can't you can't really see the blue anymore, but it may still be in there. So you got to be careful. Take take your time. So as it falls away, like it's doing, as all the everything's precipitating out. Look at the solution above. If the solution above is is colorless, if it looks like water, you don't see any blue, not even a hint of it. Then the reaction is done. And I really can't see anything here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it for a little bit longer uh, just to make sure and then we'll go on to the next step. But as far as I can tell right now you can see that what's clumping at the bottom here this is all copper 2 oxide. So 
So that is our copper two oxide, and you'll want to make your observation of what you're seeing there. Anyway, and um, so we're gonna put our phenolphthalein in, and this should, because it should be a fairly basic, actually probably very basic solution. It'll turn that color, this pink, almost purple. All right, and what we do next is we add in acetic acid. Hold it up for a second. We can fit it in here. There it is. And we're going to put that in to just drop by drop until that color is gone. When we do that, then it, it should be nearly a neutral pH. So I uh, found that I had to add in quite a bit of acetic acid, so I just cut away. And the reason we're doing all this part is simply to get the pH low enough so that the, uh, we want to get it around neutral. I think I'm there. So, uh, because if it's a basic solution will cause the filter paper fibers to expand and then the filtering doesn't go very well. Okay, so taking a lot more than I thought it would, but I think at last the color is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you see there is just the silt of the copper two oxide just a little, because of all the, what I've been putting in there, it's just been kicking it up. But you can see it's falling back down to the, the bottom and the, the solution is, aside from this gray look to it, it's colorless, the pink is gone. So the, uh, the pH must be approximately seven, at least it's not basic anymore. The way the filter paper for the copper two oxide filtration or 1.212. Okay, so we're gonna put in our filter paper, fold it once, fold it again, and then open it up. Three, on, three of the sheets or leaves on one side, one on the other. Put it into the long stem funnel, and then just put enough water to hold it down. You just don't want it popping up. In a, in a moment, it won't matter. But here's our copper two oxide at the bottom of the beaker. And I'll just stir it up. And now we gotta run all of this stuff through. And we're gonna capture all the copper two oxide and let the, all the other solution go through. So, to get it nearly to the top. Now, this is a gravity uh, filtration, so you want a whole bunch of stuff pushing down. You want a, a lot of mass in there that wants to get out and, and through the filter paper. So I keep it as close to the top as I can. And also, I'll make sure I keep mixing this up. because the copper two oxide is a precipitate and it will fall to the bottom in time, but it stays in, uh, in the solution for a while. And you can see that, let me take this out. Well, let me uh, stop here. Here is the solution filtering out. You can see that it has the slightest blue hint, which means some of the copper two iron was left behind. Oh, I made a mistake, but you know, it's, it's, you can't see it until the filtering. So I, I heated the copper two oxide as long as I thought I needed to, but definitely I've lost some copper now. We'll see how it plays out. It might be that it's less than a percent, but it might be more. We'll, we'll wait until we, uh, we weigh the copper two oxide. All right. So we're going to, let me just, uh, up here 
and all right and I'm going to where is it I'm gonna wash th this out into the funnel and then let the rest of the solution go through you can see that the filtering is pretty much done and so they say to take the ethyl alcohol and I'm just going to wash wash off the copper 2 oxide get all the solution off so that what we have left behind is only copper 2 oxide so I'm going to do ethyl alcohol and then uh, the acetone will be next give that a wash so with those two solvents there shouldn't be anything left on the filter paper but the copper 2 oxide it'll be ready for the oven. On top of that, uh, the ethanol and the acetone both are really volatile liquids, so they'll burn away or evaporate away very quickly in the oven. So we should have a dry sample within 15 to 20 minutes. So this is the copper 2 oxide with a little bit of the acetone and ethanol left on it. Putting this on a watch glass and I'm going to then put this into the oven. Uh, next. Okay, there's the oven, about 112 degrees Celsius, so above the boiling point of water, which we want, but we also don't want it so hot that it burns the filter paper. So that's a good temperature. I'm going to put it right, the sample right in the middle here. And then we'll come back in about uh, 20 minutes and see if that does it. If not, we'll put it in for a little bit longer. And here's the sample. It's, I just took it out of the oven and put it right onto the, the balance. And you can see that it's uh, very dry. I moved it around to see. It's very crumbly. I think it's perfectly dry. But you can see that little blue there. That's the copper two ion that uh, uh, was still in the solution. So we probably lost a noticeable amount of copper. Let's see what the, the mass is. 1.949. So I put the filter paper with the copper 2 oxide into the long stem funnel again and have a beaker here to catch the solution. And I'm going to put hydrochloric acid, 6 molar hydrochloric acid, in here to dissolve away the copper 2 oxide, turn it back into an ion, that, a soluble ion. And so let's just go. and. See that it reacts pretty fast. We're only supposed to use five mils, um, and that's all you need because even though it's running through the filter, we can use it from here, and we can use the solution that has gone through into the beaker. And let me just grab it from the, the beaker. I draw up some of the hydro oh, the hydrochloric acid that now has the copper ion in it and just keep recycling the HCl it'll keep doing its job and just go through and dissolve away react all of the copper 2 ox oxide so you have nothing but a green solution in the in the beaker. So this will take a, a little time, so I'm going to cut here and come back and show when all of this is done. And here's our solution. This is our copper 2 chloride solution for the observations you have to make. And here is the filter paper, still a little green, some of the copper Ion is still in there, so we're going to have to wash that through. That's going to be the next thing that we do. So we want to get as much of this copper off as we can, so I'm going to just use distilled water because copper 2 chloride is extremely soluble, so it shouldn't take too much. Just what you don't want to do is pour a gallon of water through here. It's a bad idea just because uh, 
it will dilute things. So you want to put through the least amount of water that will get you most of the green color off. So this, when I get done here, this will be about uh, two mils that I'll have added. So I'm gonna be pretty careful. I got it mostly on this side. It doesn't have to be absolutely free of, of the green color, though some students are able to do that with a, you know, with the minimum of water. They're very careful. And I notice some is collecting at the bottom here, so I might as well drag that back up. Okay, so. And I can't quite reach that. I got the water in a graduated cylinder and the pipette doesn't reach. To, okay, there we go. Okay. And I'll just do, I think, yeah, I think you get the idea, but you can see, just wanted to show you that it, it's definitely possible to get all of the, all of the green off of here. Just have to be patient, take your time with this. And do, use as little water as possible. Say five mils, you can go a bit higher, but you don't want to put in, you know, even 10 would be a little too much for this. Okay, so I'll finish this up with, uh, and um, but right here actually this is I would say this is fairly good there's very little of the green left but I'll, I'll put another one or two mils through just to be sure all right here's our copper 2 chloride solution and this is a piece of filter paper just to allow you to see the color change easier so what we're going to be doing is adding in six molar ammonia which now that I'm beginning I probably should have done in the fume hood this is reeking, but it's okay. I'll make it. So um, what we want to do is add in the ammonia, and it's going to change this copper uh, two chloride to what's, uh, they call it a, what do they say, soluble complex compound. And the name of it is tetraamine copper two hydroxide. But uh, the tetraamine copper two ion is, is soluble and it's a ver very pretty color. So we're just gonna add in the ammonia. You can see it is reacting, steaming, and smelling. <laughs> okay. And they say you should stir as you go. It's uh, just gotta, let's, let's do that then. Oops. You can see some copper, that copper hydroxide is forming that, see that blue, and that's supposed to happen, but if we keep going, let's put in the rest of this, it should do that. Once we have enough ammonia, okay, you can see that we, we still have a little ways to go, but that's what we're, that's the final form, Final product we're after. I gotta be care more careful here. I don't want to go over overboard with it either. Okay. Okay, so that's probably quite a bit of copper to hydroxide in there. And we just gotta kick it over. Have enough ammonia in here to form that complex, that complex ion. And it's getting there, it's different color, but it's not that really pretty color. Okay. And each time I'm doing, uh, I'm putting in about a mil each time that I do that. Oh, nice, there we go. So this is the uh, soluble complex compound uh, that they mentioned, so you should hold it up here. So you should write down your observations for that. And it is very warm. I think, yeah. Not boiling hot or anything, but definitely warm. Okay, so we're ready to go on to the next stage. Now we'll be adding 10 mils of the sulfuric acid to this complex compound. 
and it always says be cautious, you know, cautiously add sulfuric acid. It's it's uh, very horrible stuff. It's the only diprotic strong acid, and it has all kinds of unusual characteristics that make it pretty dangerous to handle in any way. And one of the things is, one of the reasons I say to add it slowly is because it gets so hot. I'm just trying to move the, <laughs> the reaction along, so I'm being careful. I don't see it steaming. So, but just adding uh, sulfuric acid to plain water can will heat it up so quickly that it can cause a problem. But here, it looks good. We have the color that we're after. This is now the uh, copper sulfate solution, if you're doing your observations. And we'll go on from here. All right, we're gonna add in the, the magnesium metal now. And that's gonna change the copper ion back to copper metal. And this is about 0.5 because it's just to keep you in a ballpark. You don't want to put in you know, a kilogram of this stuff. So 0.5 generally is enough to do the full reaction. If you need a little bit more, that's fine. If, and if you needed less, then the sulfuric acid will take care of it. It'll react with the remaining magnesium. So uh, how do I do this? Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna put, well, first I'll put in just a little bit. It says to do it slowly. We don't wanna go crazy because there is some hydrogen gas that is being produced and then that, on its own, it's not a big deal, but it does draw the acid fumes out into the air. So again, it's a good idea to do this in the fume hood. If there's a lot of people doing, doing this, for me, I'm just gonna sit back. Shouldn't cause too much trouble. Though I can smell it, oh. Notice the color is fading. And you might not be able to tell yet, but there is some copper forming on the bottom. All right, so I'm going to, well, let me put in the rest of this. So you can see it. I have a feeling I'm gonna need more. Ah, there we go. You can see the copper forming there. And, but you can see it's also green. So there's still copper present. I'm gonna let this go. Take this off the sides. And all the copper is gone. Looks like I'm gonna need a little bit, or all the magnesium, I'm sorry. Um, some more magnesium will be needed. So let me get do that and um, we'll see what happens when I put in a little bit more. All right, here's the copper, the copper metal. And above it looks like water. There's no color to it any longer. There's no, that blue color is gone. So I would say that it is, the copper ha ion has been completely converted back to the metal. So that's your copper and that's, you can make your observation about what you see. Oops. And then we'll weigh out a piece of filter paper that will be used for filtering out the copper metal. So that's 1.196. All right, to save some time, I've done the filtering and the drying of the copper off screen. And so I'm just gonna weigh it now and uh, get that last data point. So there's the copper. And you can see that the filter paper is kind of crinkly. Couldn't even open it up completely because it's so dried out. And here is the mass. Oops.